So. Team builder. S yes, team builder. Stole your intro. Stole your intro. And My yeah, man. yeah, no, it doesn't matter who says this, so. That's true. That's true. So long <laughs> as it's uh, so long as you're present. Exactly. Flapple last week did not do everything uh, I dreamed he would. No, not quite. She led very differently than I expected, and then she led with the lead that Flapple beat, and yes. I didn't lead Flapple. <laughs> yeah, <sighs> that was unfortunate. But it, 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 it still set up the Gengar and Urshifu to be able to win. It did, so, it did. It definitely, know. it just chunked her entire team down. Flapple did a lot of work. Porygon got a few kills, you know? You gotta, you gotta celebrate the Porygon having some kills now. He's got, um... He's not been updated yet, but it's fine. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah, Por Porygon's gonna get some more kills. I think Ashifu has to come. I agree. Because... Expanding force bullshit. Yes. If you have a dark Pokemon against an Ndidi, you want to be wearing it. Although yeah. the, the Ndidi is absolutely gonna have Dazzling Gleam. Yeah. But Ashifu does outspeed Ndidi. Yes, it does. And I don't think it's going to be Scarf and Didi. Well, if it is, so I like the thing. The things that I thought of is lead with Gengar and Urshifu with a Assault Vest Porygon Z in the back, and you're waiting to Dynamax the Porygon Z, so you don't Dynamax on the first few turns. Urshifu or Gengar, right? Gengar Urshifu is a threatening lead against his team. Yeah, so so it like doesn't lose too much actually. Gengar or Shifu does not lose too much. Like, yeah, in a, in that's a that's what I was situation. thinking. Like, like Porygon is very very good here. Very good. But yes. a, but yeah. Excelgore can just easily struggle by get down. So that's why you don't want to be leading with the Porygon C. Yeah. So I like Gengar and uh, Shifu and Porygon Z as three of our mons. Yes. I yeah. think that that is pretty clear. That well, let's be honest. They're my three best mons, so they're <laughs> going to come through a lot of games. Yes, yeah. So, uh, what, so what I thought is... We so, have established a trade, by the way, that is oh, not effective yeah. this week for okay. Sigilyph. Uh, we have traded our Golurk for Sigilyph. Um, Golurk got replaced with Boltund. We dropped Golurk for Boltund and then replaced Boltund with Sigilyph. I, and now, for okay. some reason, I love Average Cybertron Zeng. Yeah, he's my Who would have thought? Yeah. That's, that's my best friend. <laughs> yes, that is going to be very good going forward. So are we going to get rid of Kadabra then? We're going to drop Kadabra? Oh, we need to, yeah, because we've got double Psychic now. Um, so yeah, it's we need to think about our other transactions for next week, but that's something we can talk about separately. Yes. Uh, we definitely don't want to talk about that on call. No. Um, yes, for sure. Right, on video. Yes. Yeah, right. so, so yeah. So so my thoughts for this was Sash Gengar with substitute Urshifu as a lead, and then Assault Vest Porygon Z in the back substitute waiting to Dynamax. Substitute Urshifu. Yes, substitute Urshifu. Like initially just for the Amoongus, but then it's actually it seems like it, it will be able to sub in front of pretty much everything because Rapidash gets KO'd by Gengar, so Urshifu doesn't really care about that. Emolga is an Emolga. Um, Excelgor doesn't really threaten the Urshifu as well, and then you'll be able to substitute in front of everything else. And if indeed he's there, instead of substituting, you wicked blow and it dies. Yes. Okay. I like it. What's the item? I don't know at this point. Like, that's as far as I got. Fair enough. I think maybe it will end up being, like, Expert Belt or Life Orb or something. Um, Quite so possibly. I think there are a couple of things here. There are a couple of things here I'm not confident it picks up the KO on if it's not got a little bit of power boost. The yes. Raladon actually dies to um, two close combats as well, which is really, like even Dynamax, which is really G-Max, which is yes. really good. And if they're not assault best, Porygon Z still absolutely chunks it with a normal move. So, so a, like a Life Orb, Porygon Z, Max Strike, Oko's and on assault best Duraludon. Not Dynamax, but it Oko's and on assault best Duraludon. That's yeah. insane, bro. That is in Porygon is a nut job. It's, it's such a powerful boy it is oh i can't believe we're getting tailwind we're getting <laughs> gravity yep we're getting grab gnosis we're getting grab sing our team is massive upgrade with the sigilyph oh yeah yeah that was what the entire team was built around when we were drafting and now we actually have it so it's actually does gonna work out to get trick room like... it it does yes for reversing enemy trick rooms oh my god i'm so excited i wish we had it this week it would have been pretty good this week. I would have probably led with it this week and just had either yeah. Gengar or Eshfo in the back. Yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with the Sigil of Gengar lead this week? 
Not too much. <laughs> like, right? Yeah. Unfold. Oh, well. We were a day late. Yeah. We were a day late submitting the changes. It's fine. Um, it's fine. Like the the Gengar Ashifu Paragon will be good enough. Like I don't really know what the fourth one will be. I was thinking Lapras, but then you really should be Dynamaxing the Paragon Z here, and then Lapras really should be Dynamaxing itself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, would the thing is, I don't see many situations where I'd want either of our support mods, like Cottony and Togetic. Like, when are they? When do we want? Them? Yeah, I was thinking like maybe. Like maybe grassy, grassy terrain and sunny day on the cottony, like, but then that I mean, it's grassy not that terrain great. cottony does shut down the whole plan, the whole plan against against every team that he has had, which is spam yes. expanding force and win. <laughs> but then so, so does Ashifu because it just doesn't care. Yeah, it just doesn't care. That's true. So like, I was also thinking maybe a scarf go luck. Okay, explain Scarf Golurk to me. Because it would just outspeed Duraludon. Rapidash, it should. Probably needs to be Jolly. Um, but like Ra Rapidash is one of the main threats to the Urshifu. So if that's pinned with both the Gengar and the Golurk, then the Urshifu is just free to, to sweep the rest of the team. To run up, yeah. Yeah. What if you bring Scarf Rapidash? Well, well then we'll get the information game one. <laughs> like, uh... Yes. Um... I don't dislike Dom here. It all cause a lot of his team. Dom is reasonable, yes. You just always have to be wary of rain. But then, to be fair, it's only really the Seismitoad. The Pelipper, you outspeed and can just rock slide. Yeah. I can see the Pelipper being scarfed. Yeah, I can see the Pelipper being scarfed. I was a bit worried about Scarf Pelipper. Seismitoad in the rain as well. Like... So I kind of like the Cottony with Sunny Day and Grassy Terrain. I think it shuts down so much of what he does. Yeah. And like, it still supports, like it could be Sunny Day, Grassy Terrain, and then he has nothing that's immune except Amoongus to slow down. So it could be Cotton Spore. But he has Psychic Terrain. So you'd have to get up the Grassy Terrain first to be able to Cotton Spore. Yes, but if you get up Grassy Terrain, if he's in Psychic Terrain, he's probably clicking expanding force and it's really funny if you click grassy terrain and turn that into a single target not very powerful move yeah true i don't know i like i like the grassy terrain sunny day cottony just in case um i wish you got tailwind um it's all right we're getting tailwind now it's fine Like grassy terrain, sunny day, cotton spore, because like that, that shuts down the Pelipper Seismitoad combo. It sh I wouldn't even lead with it. I'd just have it in the back for if he takes out a Mon with one of the big combos. Yeah, because I, I wasn't really too concerned of what the fourth Pokemon was. Like I, I was just seeing Gengar Rush with PZ just being able to run through. So Cottony in the back should be fine. Yeah. Could go Scarf Magneton to outspeed the Scarf Pelipper. And that would Scarf that, that, Magneton, that would also get that, that would that would get the Rapidash as well. Like that pins it just like Golurk would. I think it's better than Golurk. Yeah, Scarf yeah. Magneton. I think is better than Golurk. Yeah. And then like we Scarf can, no, Magneton, and you can give it the move that destroys terrain. Uh, Steel Roller. That is physical, though. Yes, but it almost doesn't matter that it's physical because it's so strong and it destroys their terrain. Ah, uh, no, because they'd yeah. still get the... Also, oh, no, because we'd go first and it would get rid of the terrain for the... Also, only Magnazone apparently gets it. Magneton does not. Oh, god fucking damn it. I mean, it, get, steel beam? it gets electric terrain. Like, the move electric terrain. Interesting. Then we wouldn't need Cottony, really, would we? Uh... And it's a... Uh, Safeguard against the Amoongus. Oh my god. Scarf electric terrain? Are we really that are we really that wild? <laughs> Why not? Like I said, I don't think this four slot matters too much. So it can be niche things to deal with like some of the threats. Because we're probably bringing Gengar Shifu Porygon every game. I would assume so, yes. So Magneton with Flash Cannon 
Um, vault switch. I would definitely put vault switch. Yeah, I, I would probably have no steel beam and just go thunderbolt, flash cannon, vault switch, and electric terrain. Maybe electro web actually. Electro, uh, I like electro web. I like electro, electro web a lot. Yeah. I like electro web. I think vault I... switch electro web is fine. There are very few yeah. situations in which we would want to thunderbolt and stay in, because he's got a lot of ground types. One, two, like a lot of. Well, he's got three immunities with the Amulgar yeah, as well. Three immunities. Yeah. Yeah. Electric terrain. I, I I like this. I like this plan. Oh, what the hell? Um, I'm actually enjoying this Magnuson. I <laughs> Magnuson hits hard. 120 space special attack. That Oko's Rapidash every time. Yeah, it would. Would we lead Scarf Magneton over Gengar then? Maybe. I'd be like the main reason I want to lead with um, Urshifu is to deal with the Excel Gore quickly, because then you can stop the struggle bugs. But then you just you just kill it. You wicked strike and it dies. I'm assuming. Yes. But I'm pretty sure because they don't need much speed, if they go full defense, then they can live. But then they may want to go max special defense instead. So it would depend on the EV investment. Yeah. I'm worried about a Seismitoad Pelipper lead against both of these things. Well, like, if we if we, we give Gengar or Shifu, what do we do if they lead Seismitoad Pelipper? If we give uh, Energy Ball to Gengar. Oh, it's Sash. I was thinking Sash. And he's very unlikely to double Gengar. Well, actually, Ash, 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 yeah, he would it, double. And, and if we're, expect, we're expecting Scarf as well, so Scarf, Seismitoad, and no, not Scarf, Seismitoad, Scarf, Pelipper, and Seismitoad Pelipper, would be yeah. very bad. That's what I'm worried about. Yes. But then if we lead PZ into that, then we're fine. Because um, the moveset that I have is Hyper Beam, Solar Beam, Thunder, and Dark Pulse. Because then you can still max so over the lead... so I thought you didn't want to... No, no, I, I'm, I'm saying like if we were to lead that into the size of Pelipper, we're fine. But I don't want to Whereas lead it because of the Excel goal. Magneton... Wait. Magneton Gengar as a lead... Keeping our Shifu to kill stuff late. What's wrong with that as a lead? That would be then better. Struggle yeah. with Indeedee Reuniclus, right? Because how do we hit the Indeedee? No, because then we just electric terrain and switch Gengar into a Shifu. Yes. If it's if it's Reuniclus, Indeedee. Yes. You literally switch in a Shifu and electric terrain. Yeah. Like, what do they do in that situation? They're just mad tight. Yeah, we should be fine then. And then you can wicked blow the Ndidi while you... Because they're not going to Dazzling Gleam a Magnuson and the Gengar. So you switch in the Urshifu, Electric Terrain, and then wicked blow the Ndidi to kill it. Yeah. While you switch out the Magneton. That would be okay. And then if it's Gengar, Magneton against Scarf, Pelipper, Seismitoad, you Volt Switch this Pelipper and you energy ball the seismitoad and you kill them both we have to be sturdy on the magneton for that to work so no magnet pulling the dorelodon yes because otherwise seismitoad kills magneton yeah yes yeah 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 i think sturdy's the better ability anyway i think magneton oh, no, 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 no. On... And, and like Analytic is the best ability. Not on a scarf, but I mean, analytic is by yeah. far the best ability. Yeah, analytic is insane. Yeah. You have to be the last to move, though, which in VGC makes it way no, weaker. No, no. You only need to move after the Pokemon you're attacking. Really? Yes. Oh. It says it wrong on Showdown. Better than I thought it was. Okay, and then our final Mon... Well, that, that's the, the four months, right? Magneton, Gengar, Urshifu, and PZ. Yes. And then Cottony is back up, and something else is back up. I mean, is Cottony back up necessary now that we've got the, the Magneton 
electric terrain. Like, Magneton lead does deal with both of their problematic things. It deals with their weather lead, and it deals with their psychic terrain lead. So Magneton's actually an amazing lead one. Yes. Because their problematic leads both lose to it, and if they don't lead with the problematic lead, we can just Volt Switch out. So it's Magneton something as the lead. Does seem to be, yes. It's just, is that something Gengar, or is that something Porygon? Like, what do they do if you lead Magneton Porygon? It would struggle bug in that case. Like that, that like that's the main that's thing I'm concerned Elgor about. Struggle bug is the problem. Yeah, that's why I see it as if, the problem. If we lead Magneton Porygon, and they lead a Selgor what? Like, what's the worst case scenario? And indeed, he wouldn't be that bad. A Selgor and Didi, so they then do the big psychic move and. They do psychic expand force and struggle bug. I, while we mm, electric terrain. I reckon they would add, they would acid spray to try and take out the Porygon in one. Surely over struggle bug if they lead in Excel Green DD. Do you think they acid spray expanding force? I think that would be more likely than the struggle bug on that like into the PC lead if they led with that because right they should so expect we... it. To, Get anticipate that then would we not electric terrain and that massively weakens the expanding force and then max and just blow the acelgor away the next time blow the indeedy away what if we have giga impact as one of the coverage moves to hit past the psychic seed past okay. the psychic seed as in like because you'll be max striking off a hyper beam into a psychic seed acelgor but you could be Hitting physically with the PC instead. Is PC's physical attack big enough for that? It's 80. That's not the worst. It's not the worst. And Excelgor's defense is 40. Yeah. Special defense is still 60. I still think it would kill, even after... Have we counted? I'm doing that now. Because people, people think, Ah, oh, you know, that's Borogon, blah, 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 blah. But I think... It might still kill the Acelgor. Yeah, it, after if we get rid of Modest there. and have... Like, they're very specially attacking, so I would go with uh, Mild. And then, yeah, zero attack, Giga Impact. Oh, yeah, it would be Giga Impact and Max Strike is the same. Oko is Acelgor. Okay, but even if he's plus one Spadef, Max HP Acelgor, um, you have a 62.5% a chance to Oko with Max Hyper Beam. Mm, yeah. Like, even if he's Max HP... Psychic Seed. But the issue I have is, what if he brings Max HP a Selgor and just clicks Final Gambit turn one? We can EV the Porygon to lift that. Porygon has enough HP. And also, okay, and, oh, and, and also, Final Gambit into a Dynamax is not as effective. That's true. So we would need to Dynamax. That's the thing. If we led Porygon Z Magneton, we'd need to Dynamax in yes, that situation. we would. Even if they struggle bugged and we lose special attack, we still Dynamax. Well, that's a reason to have the Giga Impact, isn't it? Yes. Because he struggle bugs. So Giga Impact guarantees the kill no matter what with no investment? Yes, I would probably have a tiny bit more investment because they... Like, depending on if they can live like a Wicked Blow or something, uh, then I can see if Giga Impact would go that. But yeah, like... What what coverage would you drop from Hyper Beam, Solar Beam, Thunder, and Dark Pulse? Probably Solar Beam, because that's just for the Seismitoad, and you hit that with Max Strike anyway. Yeah, I think... Yeah, it's the Solar, it's, it's the, it's the solar Beam. You'd have to drop Solar Beam, but I, I like Solar Beam because it sets up Grassy Terrain as well, so it's a good play on... Like, so, 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 so does um, Thunder. Oh, true. Thunder still does that, and that has the other, like, Amoongus synergy. Yeah, right. So we're playing manual terrain. That would be, yeah, that would that would make the the max lightnings from Paragon Z a bit stronger on the electric terrain turn from Magneton. That's true. Oh my god, electric terrain max lightning Paragon Z is is nuts. One day we'll meme and we'll use the Paragon Z that changes its type 
conversion Porygon Z. <laughs> that was One so day. good with the Z moves, but yeah, not worth. No. Maybe worth. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, what's our sixth mon then? What do we bring as like a backup against all of the stuff we struck? Like that might be a struggle. I really hope I see Team Preview and he hasn't even brought a Selgor. I'm really worried about that Final Gambit because Final Gambit could really cripple us if we lose one of our big boys. So uh, Gengar is unaffected. Urshifu and PZ can be V2 to survive it and Magneton has Sturdy. I don't think it's worth EVing them to survive it, if I'm honest. Because uh, Urshifu is fine. Like that doesn't, that only takes 100 HP. PZ okay. takes 200 and it's too much. 20. Yeah, it's not worth it. Yeah, it's not worth it. <laughs> Because Urshifu still has to outspeed in DD, PZ still has to outspeed to Raladon. Oh my god, PZ naturally outspeeds most of this team though. Yes. The stuff that it's worried about, it actually outspeeds. I think he's got to bring rain. I don't see him not bringing rain. I would think he brings rain. I think he worries too much about Urshifu to focus on. I think he's going to lead Pelipper Seismitoad for the first game at the very least. Then or he'll it. lead Seismitoad something else and switch Pelipper in. Do we bring Lapras to the first game then? Because Lapras is pretty good against Seismitoad Pelipper. Yeah, let's bring let's bring Lapras as our sixth mon because Water Absorb Lapras just shits on a lot of his. What does Lapras lose to on his team? Wait, why are we not just building around Lapras? Because I was what concerned about it? I was concerned about struggle bugs again, um, which makes it really really weak um duraladon still beats it effectively with max lightnings but yeah actually lapras yeah. is is pretty reasonable to be fair Could run physical lapras because it's got the same attack and special yeah attacks, i'm so i don't think physical lapras is bad i've seen it run before it doesn't get freeze dry because so seismitoad it doesn't kill it effectively the, yeah the, the issue is that avalanche is its strongest physical ice move and that's base 110 as max so that's yeah. probably not worth no <laughs> god sigalith lapras would be such a lead against his team oh yeah it yeah, absolutely would like what does he do against it not too much we just gravity sing Yep. Cybertron and his in, in, mm, <laughs> indecision of Cybertron. It's fine. We can't be too mad because he actually gave it to us. Traded so. it. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I'm super grateful. I am su I did not ever think he would, but yeah. I guess Siglyph didn't do much on his team he was feeling, and so he was willing to trade it. Yeah. Um, And he got basically a free, free agency drop, which is pretty good because that's we did his free agency drop for us, and trades are unlimited, so... <laughs> Yeah. You know, he got value out of the deal too. Yeah. Um I'm just sad that it happened now and not, you know. God, Perish Song Lapras could have been really good here. Like super explosive turn one to the Porygon, just sack it to kill two things and bring him Lapras and Perish Song <laughs> would have been fun against this team. Well you say would have been. So why fat. why why can't it be? That's true. That's very true. Because his team's so fat, right? Like, I, I'm not crazy in thinking this. His team is so fat, the Perisong, like, his game plan is normally to whittle the opponent away slowly while being fatter than them. Like, Amoongus, yeah. Reuniclus, Palisand. Duraludon is his G-Max. Seismitoad is relatively bulky. Pangoro is decently bulky. He's built such a... Thick team. Yes. So we're with some good synergy as well. Like, yeah, like really all the different modes. Synergies. I can't argue. Like, he's got one of the best teams. I, de I genuinely think he's got one of the best teams. Like, just so much synergy. And the, the Reuniclus and DD lead, if you don't have an answer to it, you just lose. Well, in DD, can't follow me because it's the wrong one. Yeah, it's male. Yeah. 
But still, double expanding force from those two mons is not a fun time. Yes. Although, if I was him, I'd have taken Kadabra over Reuniverse. Or uh, Alakazam, even. Are they the same tier? I don't even know what tier. Ala Alakazam's tier one. Reuniclus tier two? Yeah, I'd have taken Kadabra, and then he could have had another tier two. If I was hit. Because Kadabra's almost as strong, but way faster, right? But, Re but Reuniclus has so much more bulk. And functions in Trick Room. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know Reuniclus is better, I just think for his team, maybe. Because <laughs> the lead is so aggressive. But I don't know. Hard to know. Um. Right, so Perish, Song, Lapras. What are the other three moves? Like, Freeze Dry, definitely. Absolutely. If you have Perish, you have Protect. Um, so... Perish, so... Song, Protect, Freeze Dry, and... It looks like we don't need anything but Water and Ice, I don't think. I don't see any need for anything else. Every Everything else gets hit. So just be Hydro Pump and Freeze Dry. Hydro Pump for the stronger moves. Yeah. Scald might be nice. Are we running Weakness Policy like uh, that then? It can't, it can't run uh, Scald. That's why oh, you have to run, run Hydro scold. Pump. No. It's a nice type. Alright, oh, that makes sense. Not giving ice type schooled makes a lot of sense, like yeah. thematically. Um, but yeah, weakness policy is is free, so you know, got to be somewhere. Yeah. What's funny is often we won't be dynamaxing or g maxing this lapras. They'll think we are, but uh, it's a big nope. Fourth move on the cottony. We've got grassy terrain, sunny day, cotton spore. If it has to be an offensive move, um, Energy Ball still chunks the Seismitoad. Trying to get another kill on the Cottony, aren't you? Of course. <laughs> okay. Um, does it have to be an offensive move? Well, it doesn't have to be. Like Leech Seed? Hmm. I don't think so. I don't think this Cottony works. I would cut the Cottony for a toga t uh, for a Togetic, I think. Now that we've got the Magneton that does everything the Cottony was meant to do. Yeah. Do we try a Togetic? We can't go in with no no support mon because he's going to get confident if we do that. Yes. Togetic can have the EVO light. Uh, super luck, I guess. Yawn Togetic could put him work against this team, honestly, especially next to the Perish Song Lapras. Yeah. Yeah, it would only be Max Lightning. We're setting up our own electric there. terrain, though, is the problem. Well. We don't always have to be. That's true. We're kind of in control of that. It, Max Lightning Duraludon's the only thing that, that maybe... Yeah. But then he's Max Lightning at Lapras, so... And then we get the weakness policy. Yeah. What else activates the weakness policy? Actually, not too much. Like, there's almost Pangoro. nothing. Like... He, that's why I'm saying Lapras is so good against his team. He's got so little to hit it with. Amoongus Giga Drain? Then why don't we Assault Vest the Lapras instead? And then just like Life Orb the PZ. Because they're separate game plans. We, I don't think we'd ever bring Lapras and PZ to the same game. Yeah. So where is the where is the stronger game plan? And there, that's where we put the AV. But other than Duraludon, I just don't see what he has to do to beat Lapras. Like, Amolga? Amoongus? Like... I think the Amoongus would be actually very... Yeah, if we can kill two Mons fast, Lapras can come in and perish Song and win the game. Yeah. And, like, the Magneton... What, what did we decide? Magneton Porygon is the lead? 
is a very aggressive lead. Yeah. This is like for game two, though. Like when we're sw switching things up. Like first game, we still do Gengar, Urshifu, Porygon, Magneton. Like that's the first game, right? No matter what. So that's why I was thinking maybe AV stays on Porygon. Yeah. Lapras could run Electric Berry. There's nothing stopping that. So no, I think I would Life Orb it. The Lapras? If the Life Orb's free, then I'd probably Life Orb the Lapras. Well, you can do the Calcs. Yeah. And choose an item. So I'll leave the item black, but... <laughs> you still gave me so much crap in my video. Wow, it's almost like he doesn't care about the Calcs. I care a lot. I just know that I'm not as good as you, so I'll just <laughs> let you do them. Like, what, what do they want me to do? Sit and call with you while you go, oh, it's going to be this EV spread, and go, mm, yes, I agree, mm, yes. But what am I going to do? No, boy, I think it should have this. Me, Duncan, yeah. with zero wins at any events, versus you, Jamie Boyd, who builds his own teams and wins. Yes. Um. So, Togetic is the last Mon. Do we like Yawn? The other option I was thinking is maybe try attack Togetic with Serene Grace. Mm. That could be interesting. It's a 40% tire a chance to paralyze, burn, or freeze, right? All three of those things are very good. I'm just looking at the team that we're planning to bring, and everything else gets hit very hard by the Pangoro. So I think I would probably have Daz and Gleam instead. Yeah. It's like Daz and Gleam, follow me. 100% follow me. Um, do we think Yawn? I think Life Do. I think it's the follow me, Life Do memes again. If that, that, yeah, if we're planning on, planning on bringing Lapras, Life Do is very good with the Aurora Yeah, Bell. it's just very good with Aurora Bell. And with Assault Vest on PZ as well, it would be very good. Yeah. So, like, Dazzling Gleam, Follow Me, Life Do, and... I, ge I, I generally default to Helping Hand. Yeah. Yeah, Helping Hand means it can sit next to Porygon Z and help it get kills as well. That makes sense. Yeah. So Pori Z, we said, was Hyper Beam, Hyper Beam. Attack. Uh, Hyper Beam, Giga Impact, Thunder, and Dark Pulse. So if this isn't maxed, it's pretty useless. Because, well, I mean, Hyper Beam's still good, but recharge turns are not fun. Well, it, I, I'll have a look at the calcs and see if we don't need Hyper Beam. If we can get away with Tri Attack. Or if we don't need Giga Impact. The Giga Impact would literally just be for Excel Core. Yeah, just Excel Core. Yeah, it's just Excel Core. And it's like we're leading Magneton and Porygon. Like, the odds of an Excel Core survive. I just think if Excel Core is a lead and we're worried about it beating Porygon, we're worried about it beating Porygon with Final Gambit, not with. Yeah. Thing. So maybe the Giga Impact isn't necessary. Maybe we keep the Solar Beam for Seismitoad, or maybe we could take Tri Attack. For... I, w I, w I would probably have Tri Attack at this point for the consistency. Yeah. Let's go Tri Attack for right now. Like, you can again do the calcs, and if you think it's necessary, a Shifu is Wicked Blow, and then we don't need any other moves because that's like that, the whole team. Why does every team just die to Wicked Blow? Every team we've seen. <laughs> oh no, it needs, it needs fighting move it for, it needs for Valadon and, and Pangoro. Pangoro. CC probably then. Yes, I, I I would think CC. And I don't have an item at this point. We need a Gengar moveset as well. Like, we haven't actually done the Gengar moveset. Yeah, Sucker Punch. I think it needs Sucker Punch. Like, Wicked Blow, Sucker Punch, CC are like every Urshifu set ever. Why am I even thinking about this? That's every Urshifu set See, ever. See, again, the Sucker Punch is awkward. Even though we have manual electric terrain, that's still a little bit awkward when there's an NDD. Oh, it's very awkward. Because that, that's, that's why I like the sub on the uh, Shifu. So, why not that set? Substitute. Wicked Blow, Close Combat, Sucker Punch, sub Substitute. So, no Detect. Uh, Wicked Blow, Close Combat, Detect, Substitutes? I'm okay with. That, that was what I had originally. Like, and I still don't know what item yet to have on it. Yeah. I mean, if Expert Belt is get awayable with, that's always good. 
Give it a focus band so it never dies, because I'll get the 10% proc every turn. <laughs> I will see if um, Roselli Berry helps it against the Rapidash or the Ndidi, but... I don't I think that matters to too much. Boost its speed. I mean, max airstream from Aerial Ace. Technically. It has scary Aerial face. Ace what? Like, like, um, like max Aerial Ace, just to boost its speed. That would be a speed boost. I don't think that's... Oh, it's, no, it's not worth. Actually. No, it's not worth. I'm just saying that is the way it boosts its speed. But um, yeah, it has scary face. That's its speed control. Yeah. And sc scary face Urshifu did win a, a tournament with over a thousand people in, so... That's crazy. Yeah. Snarl is also pretty good if that we were going... Snarl, like... Snarl would be good. Because there are a lot of special attackers. Snarl would yeah, also be very reasonable. Like a lot. Well, I'll let you think about it. Gengar... Like, I, I don't have that much input on Urshifu. Like, I like Wicked Blow Close Combat Substitute. The Detect could be Snarl. It could be Sucker Punch. It could be... Snarl or Sucker Punch. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Um, it could be Taunt. Like, Taunt it could is be okay. Taunt. And it could potentially be Scary Face, but I just don't see the benefit. I don't think we need Scary Face. <laughs> Gengar. Do we need Sludge Bomb? We don't need Sludge Bomb. Assuming Shadow yeah, Ball's we... enough on Rapidash, we don't need Sludge Bomb. Giga Drain is enough for Seismitoad. Right? Probably. Like, I'll, again, I'll see if it needs to be Energy okay. Ball or Giga Drain. But yeah, great, like sh Shadow Ball Grass move. Yeah, Shadow Ball Grass move. Sludge Bomb. Uh... There are fun, some fun tech here, like Haze. If we get Struggle Bug down, you just click Haze and get all your special attack back. That is okay. With Borogon. That is that is not too bad. It also stops any setup that he does. But the main setup that he has is the Palisand, and you just Shadow Ball that and Wicked Blow that, and like, I, I don't care about Palisand. Yeah. yeah. He's not bringing Palisand against us. I don't think so. He's bringing a Selgor, Rapidash, Indeedee, Reuniclus, Duraludon, Seismitoke, Pelipper in some combination. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to prepare for a 7 one team then. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's the thing. Like, it's in it's some combination of six from that. Yeah. I just don't see him bringing Pangoro. I don't see him bringing Palisand. No, he might be in Pangoro like just as a easy answer. Like m maybe he brings like Brick Break Pangoro. Like that that could be a thing, just for the. Because everyone was saying that oh oh why have you got Lapras? Everyone just runs Brick Break. Haven't seen any Brick Break yet. I haven't seen a single Brick Break yet on any team, <laughs> Prev. Yep. I was like, that's nice. You run Brick Break and then you hit my Lapras with a Brick Break and it triggers my weakness policy and then I kill you with the Ice Move and then... Get my, the Veil back up again. Yeah, my Veil <laughs> back up again. Like, people really underestimate how good it is to set Aurora Veil while also clicking a 130 base power Ice Move. Yes. Like, people really sleeping on that because, oh, people came up with some tech that stopped it. I don't know. So Giga Drain, Shadow Ball, what else do we need? We need something to hit in DD, I guess. Gets Dark Pulse, that would be a way. Like Energy Ball still hits it, and we don't really want Gengar against in DD anyway. No. If it's attacking it, it's pretty much just to break any Focus Sashes so that Wicked Blow could KO it. Reflect type is a cool tech, but I don't think it gets it in this gen. Uh, it looks like it. It says so on showdown. Because reflect type... Like, there are a few situations where it just shits on him. They're not... Uh, not enough, I don't think, to make it work. I think Haze is the better tech. Well, we could reflect type our own Urshifu. To make it immune to oh my god oh to my expanding god. Can force. You imagine if he led if he led double expanding force and we just switched in our Shifu and reflect typed it. That would be cool. We could be Perish Song on the Gengar as well. 
Yep, yeah, I, I think protect is going on the Gengar, honestly, or disable. One of those two. Yeah, disable could be good. Yeah, really good. I would run reflect. I, I would run haze or reflect type and then protect or disable. We don't need other attacking moves over Giga Drain and Shadow Ball. Like, what are we clicking another attacking move on? It would just be NDD, like coverage. I guess technically, if you had like Daz and Gleam for Pangoro as well, but even still, like, who cares? But NDD, I don't know. I don't know. I, I I don't like leaving it unchecked, but at the same time, is that Gengar's job to beat NDD? No, it's not. So, I think we're fine with just two attacking moves. I really, I don't know whether Haze or Reflect type is better. I really don't. He definitely would help against the struggle bugs. But there's not too much setup outside of it. Yeah. Could be torn as well. Reflect type. I mean, Will O Wisp as well. Like, there's a lot. But it's mainly physical. Uh, sorry, mainly special attackers, so I don't think will o is too necessary. The main one you'd want to will o is Rapid Ash and you just Shadow Ball that instead. Yeah. That's true. Ally Switch. I mean, always worthwhile, annoyingly. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just two utility moves, basically. Yeah. With a Focus Sash. I mean, Ally Switch, how good is that in this situation? Doesn't help against Expanding Force at all. Doesn't help against Duraludon. No. So, probably not worth. No. I wish Gengar had a way to lower special attack. It has Skitter Smack now. Okay. All right. That's <laughs> not... Okay. I mean, it, it's a way to lower special... Like, you, you say that, and then I just, I just know. Yeah. <laughs> I know the way. I'm not suggesting it. I'm just saying that is the thing. The other last thing is like an imprison tech, like something imprison to stop something we don't want to see. I wish it got expanding force because that, you'd run expanding be force lovely, in prison. Yeah. Uh, if we had dozen gleam in prison, that protects Urshifu completely from the, indeed. The oh, true dazzling gleam in prison isn't bad. It's it's for one Pokemon though. Yeah. Like nothing else would in have a matchup where Urshifu already outspeeds it. Yes. I'm going to let you choose the utility moves because I feel a little bit overwhelmed by it. Um, yeah. I think uh, we've got our team. I'm just going to let you do the EVs and those last two moves on Gengar. I think the EVs will help work out no, what the what final moves, moves should, should be. be. Yeah, yeah. That's where, I'm, that's where I'm at. I'm happy to jump in a call with you again if you want input. But again, I'm Duncan and you're Jamie. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I think I... Want a little bit more time to think about it, because I, th I thought this would be like reasonably straightforward with just what I theoried at the beginning. But yeah, this is yeah. a little bit more complicated. It is, but I think it's a little bit more robust. Yeah. All right. Well, enjoy doing the EVs. I appreciate you, and I will uh, call you tomorrow to do the team builder video or whatever. Cool. <laughs> Once you've sent me the the actual team instead <laughs> of this this jankness. Yes. Thanks, dude. Appreciate you again. Um. Speak you soon. Cool. Catch you later. So, back for the EVing for this week three. Uh, so, I've had a think about it. I think we are going to go with... Where is it? Is it up there? It is up there. Okay. I think we're going to go in with Disable, like we discussed previously in the... Uh, in the, like, main part, I guess. You know, the actual team building? Yeah, we discussed Disable. Disable will be good. If the Indeedee goes for Expanding Force, we can survive with the Sash, and then we can Disable it and then be able to survive in the future. And then I've thought about Encore as well, because if we're leading with Gengar Urshifu, then we can really pin that Indeedee, because if it goes for Dazzling to be able to hit the Urshifu, then the Gengar can then Encore the Ndidi into Dazzling Gleam so that it can't go for Expanding Force. If it goes for Expanding Force, you can Encore the Ndidi into Expanding Force as you sacrifice the Gengar, but then they can't touch Urshifu. So, Disable Encore also goes really well together. Like, if you get a Disable 
into a Pokemon and then you get to Encore it on this on the next turn into that move, then they'll be struggling. So gonna go with Encore and Disable, I think, with the Gengar. Uh, with the Urshifu, Psychic Seed is going to be the item. Don't know why I'm on caps, but Psychic Seed. Take make use of their own psychic terrain. We won't be able to do this very often, because there's what, four terrain setters that well, ability terrain setters any of the surges. So, might as well make use of the of the terrains while we can. Psychic Seed, if the Indeedee comes out. Haven't done any calcs yet, but I'm hoping that we can... Well, we should be able to live a dozen Gleam with the Psychic Seed. And at the moment, I'm still debating on whether... Um, like these two, these two moves are definitely set, and it's between Substitute, Detect, Snarl, and Taunt for the other two moves on Urshifu. But I'm going to do some calcs first, just to see... Um, where we're going to go from that. Uh, and Life Orb will be on the Lapras. So, uh, right, Calcs. Don't know why it keeps defaulting to Appleton now. But Gengar, that's gonna be, that's gonna be easy. Uh, Rapidash is 172 speed, so you just need 173. Wow, that was easy. Good start. Although, to be fair, there might be something that I can do with this Ash Bulk. I may come back to that, but that seems pretty obvious. I want to look at the Urshifu. That's, like, the main thing. What have how easily it can live. And, indeed, Dazzling Gleam. Uh, Dazzling Gleam. Don't know why Indeedy Mail doesn't have a default setting at the moment. Oh, it's going to be so easy. Look at that. Don't need anything. Hmm, okay. What about specs? The best specs in DD. That's worst case. And if we did have the final gambit number, how doable is that? Because we need 244 to outspeed in DD. Uh, so that's not going to be much attack left over at this point if that's going to happen. I mean, the Wicked Blow is just decimating the... Indeed, yeah, it's going to KO even Dynamax, indeed. Duraludon. Close combat. <sighs> yeah, that's what the calc's got to be for. How much? How much? How much? Almost all the way! Okay. That means we've got a decision. You can't outspeed in DD, Oko Duraludon, and survive Final Gambit. So that could be awkward now. How fast does the Duraludon need to be against our team? Outspeeding Flapple. You can do that with just Modest. Although he used a Timid in DD, even though he should have used Modest in his week two. Um he was using an efficient spread, so maybe he would go timid with just outspeeding Flapple. But that's all the speed he needs. I say all the speed, that's a lot of speed. So then... We need to be able to KO the Flapple back, but I'm assuming that's quite easy. Yeah, that looks quite easy. <laughs> Um, it's, it's a just KO 242 Flapple. Hmm. So if he had that, that would leave very little for HP. Yeah, and that doesn't need much investment. Hmm. The other thing I was thinking of, how easy is it for a Moongus to break a substitute? Is it just not? I expected it would, without any investment. Oh, I'm Dynamax, that's why, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I, I was expecting way more than that. Uh, with a Psychic Seed. 
that's going to be a lot. That's probably too much to be worthwhile. Yeah, that is a lot. But if we did have the 100 originally, it would need to be that. And then that is not much attack. Do we need for Reuniqueless? It would be Cold Bavari. It would def if, if he brings Reuniqueless, it's definitely Cold Bavari. Yeah, that's still going to KO. It would be Cold Bavari. For sure. But then we have Shadow Ball, so that would be so bad. I think I'm going to let that one go subconsciously for a little while while I go to Porygon Z and then I will come back. Right, ideally we would be timid just to outspeed Duraladon. But like I said, they only need to outspeed Flapple, so I think I can get away with just outspeeding them outspeeding Flapple. Because they... He did efficient spreads. Like, he didn't just do Max Macro. He did, he did on Seismitoad, even though that just needs to be 244. But, you know, that's fine. Because um, Lady Indeedy was just outspeeding something. Venusaur, I think. So, yeah, yeah. Pretty sure I can get away with just 136 speed. And that means that I would be able to go modest, which is nice. That wouldn't mean that I can actually go for the final Gambit number, even though I don't think. It's necessary because because Porygon Z is going to be Dynamaxing, so it would be out of range of Final Gambit anyway. Duraladon, Max, Life Orb, uh, Salt Vest, Easy Live, Hyper Beam. That was a lot. That was a lot. Can we survive Pangaro close combat? I don't think so. I really don't think so. Yeah. With a life orb. They'd be life orb. What's it like without? That could be a benchmark. If we don't care about Final Gambit. Because how much is that? Yeah, that's not too much. That leaves so much Spatak. That's almost max available. Can you hit at least 198? Yeah, you can. How much does... We didn't keep Solar Beam, did we? Yeah, it was just Thunder. Hmm... So it was still before Exelgore would live. Rapidash would get KO'd at Mulga Woods. Indeed he would. Duraludon resists, so would. Without a life orb on us. Seismitoad. Pretty sure Seismitoad gets KO'd. Yeah, it does. Pelipper does. Pangoro would. Palisand. That just gets dark pulsed. Like, I don't care about Palisand. Amoongus. That's that's the one I need to look about KOing. But I don't think yeah, I didn't think that I would be able to without a life orb, guarantee it. Reuniclus would definitely get KO'd. Oh, I say definite. That's actually eviable. Yeah, I did think it was stronger than darkness because of adaptability. Does that mean what does the dark pulse do to Indeedee then? Oh, it still KOs, so. 
Um, but that's something I should mention in the notes that Max Strike is stronger than Darkness against the super effective hits. Which did it do to Excelbor again? Okay. So that, that looks like it's the benchmark. And then, I guess just another point there. Where did I live? It was Pango or Close Combat. What does Indeedy do? Can an Excel Gore KO No, wait. 16. Can an Acid Spray KO an Assault Vest PZ? It can't. That doesn't need to be a benchmark, but that's good to know. Uh, Drill on. There we go. Of that, so again, doesn't need to be a benchmark. Live and indeed, no, and indeed, a rapid ash max mindstorm in terrain. Not easily. But then that's not Dynamax. Although that's almost certainly going to two shot. That didn't change, so in HP is better. I think that's probably okay. Okay, I'm going to go with that for now. Oh yeah, we were, <coughs> we were mild because we had Giga Impact at one point. But that's unnecessary. Magneton. Do they need to be timid? They don't need to be timid on Pelipper. But surely we should go timid on Magneton just as insurance, because that's like the main thing to outspeed a Scarf Pelipper. Because they, they like they only need modest. This is always the risk in draft. No, they do need Timid to outspeed Gengar. They underspeed by three if they're modest, so they will be Timid if they are Scarf. And that means that we need to be Timid on Magneton. Can an Electro Web KO a Pelipper? We can. Okay, so if they were just outspeeding a Gengar, I should know this number. Should be, it's either 119 or 120. It's 120. Should have known that just off, off by heart at this point. No, it's 121 apparently. 
that would leave them with that much. If we are timid, ElectroWeb, even with no investment, is still KOing them. So that is actually lovely. We need to go that just for insurance. Uh, Rapidash, that's what it needs to get. Oh, it's already up. Okay. Right, so flash cannon. Nice. It's easily doable. The Magneton is going to be sturdy as well. It has to be against the Seismitoad. So does bulk investment actually matter? Should it just be max attack? Probably. I'm trying to see if there's anything that I would be three shot by. Probably just expanding force, actually. Even though electric terrain can be clicked to stop that. Oh, there we go. Okay. So that is actually doable with the max special attack. There we go. That's the optimization right there. So that's the Magneton. Lapras. Didn't need any speed, right? Or did it need speed? I know it needed speed. Hmm. Does it? Does it really need to be max speed just to outspeed a Pangoro? Surely not, right? If Pangoro comes and then it's max speed, it's not going to have much bulk. Could I outspeed things with a max strike, actually? Is it 161? I think that's 107. That's 108. That's almost max speed. At that point, you might as well be outspeeding the Pangoro. Or at least Adam and Pangoro. Which is what, actually? Well, it, it would be 2 less than this. It would be at 236. So it would be 110. So then at that point, it might as well just be 244. Or bulk. So you need to let Pangoro. Oh, it's looking at Ndidi while it's here. Expanding force. It's doing a lot less than I thought it would. That's why, because it's Max Mind Stormed. There we go. So we need at least that much, or nope, not even. That's way better, because that's also a life orb number. So that's the amount of special bulk that it needs. If we are going fast, that is. I'm strongly assuming it's heavily Spatak invested. Can a resonance KO a Duraladon that's not assault vest? Because it is only coming off freeze dry. Oh. Oh. 
Oh, it can. That's definitely the benchmark. There we go. At least that. And then does it need more bulk, or does it need the out the speed out speed Pangoro? Because <coughs> Pangoro does not need to be. I guess if it's max speed, just to outspeed Golurk. Hmm. It's an awkward one. Again, I will come back to that one. I will look at Togetic now. Duraladon Steel Spike. Easy. Easy. Oh. I was going to say easy. Not actually easy. That's like max. <laughs> I thought it, was, it defaulted to bold, but not easy at all. But that it is mainly special attacking. Like I, I would be fine just going max special defense, I think. Oh, look at the change. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, max special defense. Uh, it could drop to that and not change anything. But they are, yeah, Pangaro doesn't hit it well at all. Seismitoad, if it's physical, that would be the only concern. Rapidash, I don't care about. Like, it's a Rapidash, who cares? Famous last words. Yeah, just max. We didn't have anything like safe, but yeah, max special defense is fine. Eighteen percent is not bad, and that's the best it can do. That was very easy. Right? Was there anything that Gengar could be bolts for? But I don't think there's any point. I just want to make sure that Gengar. That was that was what it was. I wanted to make sure that Gengar KO'd a Rapidash. But if a Magnuson can, without too much investment, Gengar is easily KOing it. Yes. So that's not a concern. That's going to be the Gengar spread. Coming back to this, this does need to... like, Indeed, he should probably be max speed because we've got a Darm. And they would want to speed tie with the Darm. And outspeed the PZ. So indeed, he is definitely like max speed. So the search of who does need to be effectively max speed. I think it definitely should live final gambit because it's not too much. Like even if we just put the rest in offense. Oh no, that was that was the conundrum, wasn't it? That it can't Oko Duraladon as well. It would have to change to like Black Bell or something. The Psychic Seed could be cool. What was the role? Not against a Rapidash. Okay, that is not bad. Nothing changes there, so it would be able to be split. That's not bad. I would be content with that because they could be very fast on the Duraladon as well and not much HP. 75% is reasonable. So I think that's okay. PZ. What did my Suncom just come up with? Content with the speed. What did I KO with that Spatak investment? It was accelerable, wasn't it? I did the NDD Acid Spray Calc. Lives Pangoro. Can it live Acid Spray and Life Orb Duraladon? That's 
that's going to be close, actually. What did it do? It did 16 before. So I need to actually put the number and then take it away. Uh, 16 is 26. Minus 2. Can still live. That's that's very nice. <coughs> that means that there shouldn't actually need to be more investment necessary. Is it Loco, Excel Gore, if they don't have sp spadef investment, but they really should. They have space to be able to do so. Uh, Rapidash, Imolga, Indeed, Dreldon would live anyway. Seismitoad. I already did that calc, but I'm just double checking. Yeah, it still still does. It's good. Salt best pangaro. Lives, and I can't help that. But non assault best gets KO'd. If they bring pangaro, it would surely be assault best. Oh, can Urshifu KO that pangaro? Yes, easily. Good. Yeah, it's easy. Yeah, I'm, I, I think I'm happy with that spread as well. It would just be if I went final gambit, but I don't think that's worth it's because we are going to be Dynamaxing the PZ almost certainly, Final Gambit wouldn't actually be too much of a concern. Final Gambit in two specs in DD. That's the last thing I'm going to check. Wish it was defaulting. It's annoying having to type all this out again. Spanning force. Well, I haven't put a silver on that's why. It's four. Four. What did it do? 187. Max Mindstorm. Hmm, okay. Not ideal. Is it worth sacrificing attack for more survivability for that? That is quite niche, and surely they're not choice specs. Because if they're choice specs, then they can't touch Urshifu. They need to be able to switch moves to Dazzle and Gleam. Which is why the Disable Encore should be good. So yeah, I think I'm okay with that spread. Pretty sure I'm okay with the Magneton. Because we're sturdy, we don't actually need too much, but gets three shot. Then the Lapras. Speed or not too speed. Concern would I be that Pangoro would be a very fast? <clears throat> Can we Oko a Seismitoad with just a freeze dry in its Dynamax form? Why is that doing so little? That's why. Oh, no. No chance. Absolutely no chance. What was I thinking? Mm, to be fair, there is a chance if they got not much bulk. But still. It was modest for sure.
else would there need to be to live? I was just thinking like Max Lightning from Amolga, but I don't care. <laughs> I also need to think about the four moves on the Urshifu. That was something I said at the beginning and I haven't thought about yet. Did I look at the Pangaro close combat and Lapras? Oh no, because I said I was going to and then I did Ndidi instead. Should be bulk. But we've already got lots of bulk. Not enough. So 28 and 12. Should have some speed creep in case they're just trying to creep Lapras a little bit. But that looks like it's not going to be possible. It is not possible. else. Max Overgrowth from Lumungus. Let's go. Um, we'll find the Gambit easily. Max Lightning from a Duraludon. That is livable. And that should be lived. But it will you will Lapras will still be two shot by a Max Lightning, even in Dynamax. If, if I EV it to live just one in regular, it will still be two shot because the electric terrain will be set up on the next turn. But this should be EV4. And this looks like where the bulk is going to be going. This is surely not optimal. Because it would be better to go... Surely better to go to the death than HP because the HP is so high. But the fact that you can't live Pangoro means that there's no real need for defensive investment again. I guess a Max Lightning from a Rapidash. Is lived. Okay, so yeah, I don't care. Uh, but that means that does make this that makes so much difference. Wow. Okay, that's the first time it doesn't. So, it's lightning there. Do rather gone. That's good. That's space for some speed creep against a Pangoro. Okay, so let's think so. They outspeed, no speed Lapras. So we would be outspeeding them outspeeding us. So if they go for that, then we go for that. And then would it be necessary to... Like, because that, that killed the Duraludon with the Life Orb Freeze Dry, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Um, but if they have, like, any more Spadef... I'm just going to make a note of the Lapras spread, just so... What is 108 actually? What's it doing? There we go. 108. That is a life form number. Perfect. Let's go. Easy. Right, 36. 
one, two, four. And then there was some speed creep there. Oh, I was being something with a max strike. Um, it wouldn't be in DD. Outspeed a Duraludon, outspeeding a Flapple. Needs 91 speed. Hmm. Necessary is that because that's surely the speed that the Duraludon hits. Because we can outspeed a Pelipper after a max strike. And that needs 86, and that is what that is. So. How necessary is it to outspeed the Duraludon with... It would need five more EVs. How much do I care about a Rapidash? The answer is I don't think I do. So then... That means that we are going to lose. Oh, that that's a big jump. No, it needs to be HP. Wait, no, that, that wasn't a big jump, because... There we go. Ooh, there we go. Okay, 108. Gets to the 91. I'm just going to double check that, because I don't want a speed tie. Oh, wait, no, not 136. 135. Yeah, it's 91. And that leaves 8 left over. Defense or special attack. I don't think it matters at this point, but what's a drain punch like? Why is that doing so much? Iron Fist. They need to be scrappy. They don't need any mold breaker. No, we're not living. Well, that is life orb, to be fair. Actually, yeah, no, that's Iron Fist, drain punch. Aha! Not doable. But does the 4 and 12 change anything? Yes, it does. So that's going to be that. So that is the lap spread. And I think I'm done. That one's done. That one's done. Yep. That's going to be it. Also, I've changed Detector Snarl. Forgot to say that. Said in the video that I was going to see about the fourth moves, and then decided on Snarl over Detect. Goodbye.